welcome to day number four. Welcome to day number seven. Day number 12. Welcome to Do It Heartily. Aloha, welcome back to the Do It Heartily channel. We are in the book of Judges, chapter number seven. But before we jump into God's word, let's open in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now. Thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for allowing us to worship you every day through prayer, through your word, through praises, through seeing your creation. We ask that you would remove the devil and his distractions. Speak through me and uh, just pray that everybody that's watching would grow in their relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, we are still talking about Gideon. And if you remember, we talked about uh, who's going to be with Gideon every step of the way that's going to be God. And so whatever you may be going through right now as a teenager, maybe uh, your parents aren't doing well together, or maybe you're struggling in school, maybe you're struggling with friends, maybe you're struggling in your own relationship with the Lord, whatever you may be struggling with, you have to remember God's going to be with you every step of the way. You can always, always turn to him just like Gideon's able to. Remember, uh, Gideon's family was poor. Gideon's the youngest in his house. He wasn't. He didn't have that confidence. He, he didn't know what else to do. And God said, hey, listen, I'm going to be with you every step of the way. He went out. He recruited that army. He got 32,000. And now God's saying, hey, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. That's too many. Let's bring it on down. And he said, ask them if they're too afraid. They can go home. 22,000 men left. That leaves 10,000. And so remember, we talked about not being afraid. We talked about trusting in the Lord with all thine heart. Don't trust in fear. Trust in God. He's always going to be with you, just like he's with Gideon and these remaining 10,000. But we need to continue to, to look to him and see how we, too, can grow in our relationship with the Lord. Verse number four, it says, And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. So 10,000 is still too big of an army because, remember, this victory is going to belong to who? It's going to belong to God. Even though God's going to be with us every step of the way, but remember, why are we created? We are created to give God the glory. So when you get that A on that science test, you need to stop and say, thank you, God. When you get that touchdown pass or you score that basketball goal or, or you're performing music and you do really well, whatever your talent is and you do really well, you always need to make sure and praise God. God. Give him the glory. That's the ultimate reason we are here. So it says, that, uh, the Lord said unto Gideon, the people are yet too many, Judges 7 verse 4, bring them down into the water and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So I know that sounds like a tongue twister of a verse, but basically what's going on here is God tells him in uh, verse number five, he says, so he brought down the people unto the water. Uh, you guys have probably run the mile for school or maybe you played some sports or maybe just just for PE, for physical education, you played some dodgeball, basketball, whatever it may be. You get hot, you get sweaty, kind of like I am right now, and then you start to crave what? Your mouth gets dry, you're craving water, right? And so that's what God tells Gideon right here. He says, I want you to get them physically exhausted. I want you to get them really tired. I want you to get them really hot, really sweaty, craving that water. And let's see how they drink the water. So verse number five, it says, so he brought down the people into the water and the Lord said unto Gideon, everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink. So God says, everybody that dives head first in, drinks the water like a dog, they got to go. Even though they're not afraid, they are a bad soldier. Now, it's important to understand this. We're not just talking about being a bad soldier for God. This is talking about being a bad soldier in any type of military. You say, well, what do you mean? If they're diving head first, like let's say they, they were preparing for battle, right? They're hot and sweaty and they stop somewhere to get some water, they don't know that the enemy is could be hiding in bushes or in the forest or in the trees somewhere, and they dive head first, and all of a sudden the enemy runs out, they're trying to be sneaky, and shoo, chop their heads off or stab them with a spear, 
they attack, boom, they're dead. All because their heads were in the water. They were not looking around for the enemy. But if you drink the water like this, you know, God gave us peripheral vision, right? To be able to look around. You drink the water like this, look to your right, oh, nobody's coming. Look to your left, oh, nobody's coming. Or if you look over, somebody's coming, I'm ready. Ah, you're ready to fight back towards that enemy. Now here, it's important to understand uh, these guys were being bad soldiers in the military, but God knew they needed to get out because they were going to be bad soldiers in this scenario. But spiritually speaking, go with me, hold your place in Judges and go to 1 Peter chapter number 5. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. That first part there says be sober. That means to be aware, to look around at your surroundings. Be vigilant. Always be looking because your adversary, your enemy, when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, the devil becomes your enemy. And it says there he's a, he's a roaring lion walking about trying to devour you. Devour literally means to rip apart. Again, soldiers fighting in a battle, they're not you know hitting each other with with nerf sticks or anything like that they are trying to chop heads and and disembowel people and just i mean they want you dead because it's either you or it's either, or them and the devil's the same way he wants us out of the equation and so god needs good soldiers for him right so these ones that uh drink with their like a dog it says there in verse number five so he brought down the people into the water and the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of water with the tongue as a dog lappeth. Oh, we already read this part. Sorry, verse 6. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were 300 men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. That means 9,700 men drank like a dog. They were not afraid to go to battle. They were ready to trust in the Lord. But they were not ready to face the enemy. The ones that drank like this, they were ready to face the enemy. When you woke up this morning, were you ready to face the enemy? Were you ready to face the devil? Did you wake up this morning, open up your Bible and say, not today, Satan. A lot of you, you've probably seen those shirts, right? You've probably seen it as a meme on Instagram or Facebook. People wear shirts and hats and, and they post it and say, not today, Satan. Is that what you woke up saying today? Not today, Satan. You ain't going to mess with me today. You're not going to mess with me through my parents. So how can they mess with you through your parents? Just as you're about to go out the door, this, this used to drive me crazy. My mom used to do this to me all the time. I would be ready for school. I'm dressed, I've already taken a shower, I've eaten breakfast, I'm about to walk out the door, get in my truck and go to school, and I have it timed perfectly to get there, and she's like, wait, 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 I need you to swing by the bank and the post office and drop this off. But mom, that's gonna make me late. What are you doing? I don't, but instead of doing that, I was like, okay, mom. But in there, I, I get anxious and I get, you know, real uppity and just like, what am I gonna do, you know, kind of thing. The devil's going to try to use your parents uh, to throw you off a little bit, to give you a bad attitude for God. But you don't want to do that, okay? You want to be aware of Satan's attacks. He, he can come at you through your parents, through your teachers, through your friends, through your siblings, whatever it may be, to throw you off. But you need to start your day with, Lord, remove the devil and his distractions. And if he tries to distract me, help me to get through it. Help me not to get angry at my classmate or or to lose my temper whatever you may struggle with maybe your teacher asks you to do something or, or turn in homework and you legitimately forgot lord help me not to lie i just need to tell the truth i need to honor and obey you start your day off in god's word and you'll be ready for the enemy's attacks all right we're going to continue uh to learn about gideon and his 300 in the next episode so join us then we love you god loves you even more and aloha